In this video, we're going to spend a few seconds looking at each prefab included in the collection, starting with these cliffs. As you can see from the scale of these meshes, my goal with this collection is to provide you with real meat and potatoes geometry which you can quickly assemble into large maps. Here you'll see the two basic cliff walls which have a flat, an inward curving, and an outward curving version. It's all 100% photogrammetry, but it's not just random chunks. I've put a lot of planning and a lot of effort into how these pieces fit together as a complete set. Everything in this collection has hand-built, accurate, fast colliders, and has high-quality LODs. It's 100% complete, optimized, and ready to use in your game. Plateaus work great as standalone formations, but they also work great if you blend them in with the other cliffs to create more interesting shapes. One thing I like to do is stack them on top of a base of even larger cliffs to create an imposing, multi-layered mountain of rock. By the way, all of the cliff walls and plateaus are going to need capstones. I'll show you those later. If the game camera never sees the top, well then you don't need the capstones and you can save on polygons. So I've also included these two stone fins that are similar to the plateaus, but they're smaller and the top side is enclosed. It turns out that photogrammetry of cliffs takes quite a while because of all the walking. Now these are essentially small chunks of a cliff. I named them sediment because of all the layering. When I made them, I didn't realize just how much I'd need them, and I wish I had a lot more. If I make a second collection, I'm going to include a lot more stuff like this. These are so great at detailing a map and let you create walls without always relying on the same huge cliffs. They can act as the walls of a cave or a deep crack, outcroppings, or anything you can think of. There are nine rock spires in this collection. This one's my favorite. They really look great if you use them to enhance the player's view of the horizon. In reality, these aren't all that uncommon out in the desert. I often find them where a thin wall of sandstone has eroded to be so thin that finally only a few spires remain standing. Don't forget that you can put a capstone on top of these to customize them a bit. Now let me mention some of the technical details. As shipped, all of the PNG files are 4K in size. To save on video memory, I've set up Unity to import the smoothness and ambient occlusion maps at half resolution. All of the rocks make use of detail textures to maintain the grain of the sandstone when viewed up close. Often, several formations will share the same texture and material, but if so, each item has its own set of UVs for the purpose of baked lighting. Once you try one of these out in your own maps, you'll know why I like this one so much. This is one of the most impressively detailed and useful sets. Ledge 1 is a full 360 degrees on the sides and includes a detailed top. Ledge 2 is more of a wall with a detailed top and a flat back. It comes with a straight, an inward, and an outwardly bent version. You can use this at the base of less detailed cliffs, as a trench or tunnel wall, or as you see here, as a ledge at the base of a plateau. These were rather hard to make, but they turned out perfectly and uh, are level design gold. The obstacle category is what I would consider to be set pieces. These are rocks that are meant to be seen up close and thus they have a lot of attention put into the details. When you're creating your maps, You'll want to display them prominently as landmarks or cluster them in areas of particular interest. The complex layering and erosion of the original rocks demanded a higher poly count than usual and the obstacle category also gets a higher pixel density. Notice that they all share a similar style with rounded caps of lighter stone set on top of a flaky, pages-of-a-book type of sedimentary layer below. This is because they all came from the same outcropping, right at the point that the giant, tilted sandstone slab that forms the cliffs you've already seen dives under the valley floor. The map calls this area Castle Valley, and that's where this collection got its name. The larger area is called the San Rafael Swell, which is a 50-mile zone of uplift in central Utah. 
Millions of years of weathering have eroded away the top, exposing the strata beneath, and creating all of these classic desert formations. Hiking and wandering the desert is my favorite activity, and by creating this collection, perhaps in a way, I'll be sharing the sense of adventure with you and your players. The only difference is the creatures in your world are probably going to be a lot bigger and meaner than a rattlesnake. These cliff blocks are closed meshes, literally blocks of solid sandstone you can use in a lot of ways. Block one is small and detailed and works great if you embed it in a slope as if it broke off of a cliff. Block two is absolutely huge and looks great when you use it as a capstone or as a ledge. And I really love the patina and the streaks down the side. Block three complements the big one and using them together you can really create a sense of scale. Here you see them used as heavy capstones on top of the cliffs. Also notice how there's a big chunk that looks like it's broken off. Now the category here is a large set of sandstone plates. And if you're wondering what they're for, the answer is pretty much everything. Without these plates, level design would be a lot more work than fun. These plates complement and tie together the rest of the collection. Mainly you'll be using these as capstones on top of the cliffs. This makes each cliff silhouette unique, even when you're reusing the same prefabs, since you can mix and match and rotate and flip each plate in infinite combinations. They're so important that I made extra, more aggressive LODs for them, and this allows you to use them more generously around your map. You'll also discover how great they are for making small outcroppings or as the floor of any small wash or canyon. You can use them with other rocks and boulders, all jumbled in a debris pile, and you can even add rigid body physics to them for destruction scenes. I like to balance them on the top of spires or have them protruding from the side of steep terrain slopes. Obviously, if you stack them in an artistic way, they make for great natural stairs or thin ledges leading to secret areas. In reality, some of these sandstone plates had a thick, black desert patina, which was actually somewhat shiny. And you'll see how I've captured that in some of these scans. Now these didn't start off as small rocks that got scaled up. Uh, they were actually very large, very heavy, and uh, really impossible to scan the bottom side. So what I did is I took two different similar looking plates and merged them together painstakingly and created the final fully enclosed mesh. Obviously, I'm showing both the top and the bottom of the same item on the turntable. Speaking of turntables, hopefully you're not getting too dizzy from all this spinning. I've got to apologize for having so many rocks, and there's still a lot to show. It's a huge collection. Notice how I've broken up this otherwise smooth, boring slope with lots of those little ledges I'd mentioned before. And in this example, you can see how the plates are being used as capstones to top off the cliffs and blend back into the terrain. Now these boulders have a lot of character, with interesting erosion, splashes of colorful lichens, patina, cracks and flaking. As you place these boulders around your map, see if you can figure out which one has the fossilized sea worm tracks. In life, these boulders were far too large to roll over, so I've left them open on the bottom. As you can see, they have plenty of detail and scale up nicely. They're really convincing and I don't think anyone is going to think they were made in ZBrush. The only problem with the boulders is I wish I could provide even more of them. And I will in the next collection. I've scouted out a new place with a million to choose from. The key to good photogrammetry is of course the source material. You need to make sure you have enough matching items to build a useful set. You also have to do all of the photography in overcast conditions, which can be rare in the desert. It's a long path from photos to game-ready prefabs, and Castle Valley Collection number one took a full year to make. So there's 15 rocks. They're all closed meshes, low poly, and look good at any scale or orientation. In this turntable view, I'm showing each rock twice. One right side up and the other rolled over so you can see all of the sides. 
As you can see, there's a careful balance of variety without getting so unique that you'd notice dreaded repetitions in your game's world. Now, since they have very low poly colliders, it would be easy to add rigid body physics to make rock slides or debris with this set. There's also this tiny set you can use for painting on detail meshes or for rubble particles, stuff like that. Their axis is at their center of mass for your convenience. These rock piles add insane amounts of actual geometric detail without adding countless individual objects. Using these rather than many, many individual rock meshes, the graphics card has a lot less overdraw and far fewer back faces to cope. I like to scale them up and place them at the base of cliffs to look like old rock slides, and then to use them at a smaller scale where the player will see them up close. If you mix in some bigger rocks and boulders, you can quickly make very convincing, complex scenes such as this, which only use a small number of actual game objects. Flat 1, 2, and 3 are meant to be embedded in the ground. These are rocks you can walk over. The bottom of the mesh is open. They're large and scale up very well to cover all kinds of problems, and they help to blend surface types. It's also the kind of thing you could use to flip over and use as the roof of a cave if you need to. Just imagine these poking out of some smooth sand in an artistic way. Ground one is going to be your best friend. It's detailed and has a lot of polygons, but that means it scales well and catches all that light and shadow. While initially you may be tempted to overlook the ground panels, you'll find yourself using them over and over. The Castle Valley collection was meant to be complete and save you hours of frustration when otherwise you'd be trying to improvise ways to do without pieces you really wish you had. You'll use these guys a lot. You can use these small ground panels to cover those little gaps you get where bigger meshes don't quite fit together perfectly. And just for the sake of completeness, I'm including these seven terrain textures to get you started. But remember, you can use all kinds of great ground textures you find online with this set. All right, and now for the bonus items. First, we have a juniper tree. It's a beautiful set piece, but too high poly for populating a whole forest. The trunk on this tree looks really good up close. Keep that in mind when you're making your levels. It's actually an old dead sagebrush that was uh, scaled up to tree size. If people want more of these, I may make more for the next collection. These are included just in case you need some basic sagebrush to paint onto your terrain. A small bush is included also. So thanks to my dog, pieces of this roadkill kept showing up in the yard. When this one finally showed up, I knew I would have to scan it. Enjoy! I made this giant snake skeleton for fun as a decorative prop. Of course, it wasn't created with photogrammetry, but even so, I thought you guys would have fun with it, so I'm including it. I actually look forward to seeing how you'll use it. The truth is, I'm not the greatest level designer, and I'm sure your maps will look way better than mine. Remember that in theory, you should be able to mix all sorts of other realistic assets with this set. And there's one last bonus. You'll be getting these evil condors, too. All you have to do is drop them in your map somewhere up high, and their script will create some waypoints for them to patrol around. There isn't much to them, but they look great up in the sky. To those that decide to purchase the first Castle Valley collection, thanks in advance, and I hope you find it to be as much fun to use as it was tedious to make. And now it's time to thank my six assistants. Luna, for protection against jackrabbits, Bacchus, Shelby GT, Woodstock, Barry Godelo, and Vincent Van Goat for packing supplies into the deep desert. Links are in the description, and thanks for looking.
Well, this is sure a cool spot. Giant hoodoos, marshmallow rocks. And of all things, like I thought I'd find, dinosaur bones.